Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Well, the mayor of eastern Aleppo told European leaders at their summit in Brussels that more action is needed to save civilians in his city. But Syria was just one item on the European Council's agenda, with the migrant crisis and the situation in Ukraine taking up much of the meeting. The leaders won't start discussing Brexit until they sit down to dinner. But Britain won't be there. Theresa May has been told she's not invited. Our political editor, Gary Gibbon, is in Brussels now. Gary. Well, that account of life in Aleppo that the European leaders heard earlier from the mayor of East Aleppo was apparently really quite harrowing. But Syria remains the last item on the communique, it looks like, from the drafts we've uh, seen. And actually what's dominating the thoughts here is Vladimir Putin and the threats that he poses, uh, not least on Europe's eastern flank. They were hoping the EU leaders that here they could send out some very strong messages uh, towards uh, Putin, some of the leaders at least. They have managed to uh, renew sanctions against uh, Russia, but at the same time, because of one of the other major concerns they have, uh, which is populism's rise in Europe, they've been trying to send out another message on behalf of the Dutch Prime Minister. He's been trying to get a, a treaty, EU-Ukraine treaty, uh, uh, ratified by the Netherlands, and because of concerns about that there, they've actually had to put out a message in the same communique, it's not out yet, but we've seen the draft, as I say, which effectively slightly cold shoulders Ukraine. So you can see the sort of tension there uh, within the EU. And it's that ratification process, the business of trying to get every single country in Europe to sign up to something that Europe's agreed to, which is one of the reasons why a senior British official uh, has been uh, quoted overnight as having warned the government that an awful lot of leaders here, if not the vast majority of them, think that when it comes to Brexit, ratification, and the whole business of negotiation of the future relationship means that the final end point when there is a new relationship between Britain and Europe could be really quite a lot of years away. Here's how the day went here. The mayor of eastern Aleppo was led in to speak to Europe's leaders by the president of the European Council, Donald Tusk. But Syria hasn't dominated this summit. And when he left, the mayor said the international community was still effectively silent on the atrocities in Syria. Vladimir Putin's ghostly presence is felt in this room. They fear he could interfere in upcoming elections around Europe. They've renewed sanctions against Russia, triggered by Russia's seizure of Crimea. The leaders were addressed by another outsider, the Secretary General of NATO. In times with uncertainty, like uh, we see now, we need strong institutions. We need institutions that build the partnership between Europe and North America. But the institutions are shaky. Donald Trump threatens NATO solidarity, and Britain has wounded this institution. We have underestimated the drama behind Brexit. There is a G7 country, the second economy in the single market of the European Union a veto power of the Security Council of the United Nations, leaving the European Union. This is weakening the European Union without any doubt. For a few moments as the talks started, Theresa May cut a friendless figure. She's heading home before dinner as the 27 countries remaining in the EU want to discuss how they'll go about organising themselves for the Brexit talks. I welcome the fact that the other leaders will be meeting to discuss Brexit tonight uh, as we are going to invoke Article 50, trigger the negotiations by the end of March next year. It's right that the other leaders prepare for those negotiations as we have been preparing. We will be leaving the EU. We want that to be as smooth and an orderly process as possible. Next door, members of the public have been touring the leaders' spanking new home in Brussels, a multi-million pound giant neon egg. But spirits here are dimmed, and the EU goes into the new year seeing threats on many fronts. I can't hear anything. Cue me, Robert. Um, the, uh, the, 
the 27 now are going to be sitting down there having their dinner. And uh, I don't know if you heard it in the, what Theresa May was saying there, but there's a very slight hint of criticism there. It's right that they organise themselves and get ready for the negotiations. I think there's a feeling around Theresa May a bit that there's been an awful lot of criticism of Britain not having a Brexit plan ready. But today we saw bickering, really, between the different institutions of the European Union, the European Parliament saying that they feel they should be represented in the room for those negotiations, and the European Council and the European Commission more or less turning around and saying, no, forget it. So those tensions are there, a sense in London that maybe not all the ducks are in a row on Europe's side for these negotiations, and a sense also that we're, we're getting a foretaste of all the divisions and fractiousness, even around process before you get to substance in Brexit. Gary Gibbon.